bouts against Matt Serra and Matt Hughes. Chris Lytle had reached a crossroads in his UFC career. But while this would have caused some fighters to falter under such pressure, Lytle went back to the gym more determined than ever to succeed. At UFC 73 in July, he tore through Jason Gilliam with a vengeance, winning the fight by utilizing two submissions at the very same time. Tonight, the veteran of over 50 pro mixed martial arts fights plans on making the highlight reels once again as he faces Tiago Alves. I know he wants to knock me out. If I could pick one way to win this fight, I guarantee it's by me knocking him out. And my goal for this is at the end will be fight of the night with me winning. A once erratic fighter whose over-aggressiveness cost him a bounce against more experienced opponents. The 24-year-old Tiago Alves has settled down and put together an impressive three-fight win streak. In the past year, he has beaten respected veterans John Alessio by unanimous decision, Tony D'Souza by knockout, and TKO'd Kuniyoshi Hiranaka. But if this former Muay Thai champion and Jiu-Jitsu black belt hopes to move from prospect to contender, he must defeat Chris Lytle tonight. It's gonna be a war. I'm ready. You guys are gonna see a very exciting fight. Not a lot of striking, a lot of action, and I'm gonna knock him out. Coming up next, Chris lights out Lytle, squares off against Tiago Pitbull Alves. guys in this division. He's fought many times as a professional boxer. He has excellent hands. He's got a great ground game, especially his guillotines and his chokes. Choked out Tiki with that schoolyard bully choke. He's got a great guillotine that he used on Ronald John. He's got a really excellent ground game that he displayed in this loss to Matt Hughes, but he was able to sweep Matt Hughes, something that we've never seen in the octagon before. And, uh, you know, he, he showed a very good defensive ground game as well. He's a tough, durable guy. He's been in there with top, top contenders. He's fought Robbie Lawler. He's fought Carl Parisi and Dean Thomas, Joe Riggs. He's been in there with a lot of guys. And this is going to be a big, big test for the young Thiago Alves. Chris Lytle has never been submitted. He was stopped just once. That was due to a cut in the loss to Joe Riggs at UFC 55. But he seems to me as a changed guy since the fight with Sarah because yes. he really feels like the decision should have gone his way. And now, as, as great a guy and as, as nice he is, he, he still fights with a little bit more anger than he used to. That's a good point, Mike. I think he felt like he didn't do quite enough to beat Matt Serra, and he could have made it more decisive. He feels like that should have been his fight. And ever since that fight, come, he's been coming out much, much, much more aggressive. When he fought Jason Gilliam, he looked like a wild animal. Looked completely different than the Lytle, the cautious Lytle that we saw in the Matt Serra fight. He's still got a huge, huge career ahead of him. He's only 33 years of age, and tonight, it's a big test for him. Chris lights out Lytle, returns to the UFC. Always smiling, always having fun. From Fortaleza, Brazil, now an American top team, Thiago Alves, who since the loss to John Fish, has absolutely gotten better in each fight. John Alessio, Tony D'Souza, uh, I mean, very, very much put on a clinic against Kuniyoshi here in Naka. He's dynamic, he's a dangerous striker, and he has outstanding kicks. He is one of my favorite young up-and-coming fighters in the UFC, and uh, he's one of those guys that every time we see him at the tender age of 24, He's better every time we see him significantly. He's one of those guys you see him like, well, which Tiago Alves are we going to see now? Because it's every time you see it, it's a new, improved version. He's also enormous for 170 pounds. He struggles to make 170, lose a significant amount of water weight, and looks completely different from the weigh-ins 
Then he does his fight night. I mean, the guy rehydrates himself by over 20 pounds. I had a chance to talk to his coach before his last fight in the gym. The, the day of the fight, they had him doing all these exercises where he burns out, where what they're trying to do is deplete his muscles, get, get the blood into his muscles, and then they carve him up over and over and over again. It's a very scientific method of rehydrating himself over a, a long period of time. They start from the morning of the fight, and they do it all throughout the day. So during that day, from the time of the weigh-ins to 24 hours later, he puts on over 20 pounds of water. You look at him right now, that's a big 170. Big, dense muscles, and he's probably walking in here well over 190 pounds. Wow. Tiago Alves, the pit bull, set to face well-tested veteran Chris Lytle. For this welterweight matchup, we mentioned the Brazilian is 24, nine years younger than the American. Everything else, at least at weigh-in time, almost identical. But as Joe points out, Alves right now is not 171 pounds. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 34 wins with 14 losses and four draws. Standing five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Indianapolis, Indiana, Chris Lightfoot! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 18 wins with four losses. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 171 pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Tiago Pitbull And when the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Dan Mergliota. Dan Mergliota, our referee. That is not a small man. Either is Tiago Alves. He faces Chris Lytle. Let's go fight. Here we go. Lytle in the white trunks. Alves in the blue trunks. Lytle comes with the overhand right early. Lytle has excellent strikes, very good boxer. Tiago's a very good boxer as well, but Tiago is got the vicious Muay Thai leg kicks. Wasn't a bad kick to the body a moment ago. Oh, Chris Lytle's got all sorts of strikes. He's a very well-rounded fighter. Former fireman, family man, as has been mentioned before, a firefighter for seven years. Oh, he got caught. He oh, stepped man. right in, got and caught immediately. And he's up already, yep. Right hand by Tiago, caught him right in. Over the left eye. <laughs> That's exactly what we were talking about. He has chosen to be a much more aggressive, much more exciting fighter. The cautious first style, caution first style that got him to where he, you know, was in a position where he didn't know what, what his future holds in the UFC. He had lost some fights and he probably could have won and he, he was frustrated and he decided to change his style and become much more aggressive. Well, you just look at his resume. Lost the decision to Lava, a decision to Parisian. A split decision to Sarah, a decision to Hughes. I would say the man doesn't like going to decision. You know what? He's got a nasty cut. That one punch. Oh, good body shot by Chris. Lytle goes down. Alves trying to take advantage. Close guard utilized by Chris Lytle. I don't think he got rocked there. But he does have a nasty cut over the left eye. Chris Lytle has a very good guard, very dangerous guard, and Tiago Alves has been submitted before. Lost his UFC debut to Spencer Fisher by triangle. You know, some believe that, that the best chance of winning for Lytle might actually be grappling. Maybe Alves agrees as they come back to the feet. Good right hand and left body kick by Chris Lytle. Man, he's really swinging for the fences, Joe. Coming with that overhand right. He's got Tiago thinking, because Tiago is usually much more aggressive, especially with his kicks. That 
what point could that one two become predictable to Alves? Lytle changes it up, just as I mentioned. Well, I think what Chris is trying to do is really lure him into a striking exchange, especially with the hands. Oh, very nice body kick. And again, he's looking for a flurry. And it, right hand, left kick. Left kick to the body, and you can hear it. It just resonates throughout this sold-out Prudential Center. What's interesting, Mike, is the slapping noise that you hear usually is indicative of a strike that doesn't land as hard because it lands with the foot and the instep as opposed to the shin. The shin kicks, especially to the legs, really don't, the really powerful ones don't make nearly as much noise. They make that thud, don't that, they? Yeah, that meaty thud. That's a nasty cut dripping down the face of Chris Lytle. Interestingly, though, it doesn't seem at this point to be affecting his vision real badly. It's almost coming oh. out of the side of his eye. There's the There's thud you talked kick. about. You that's talking the about thud. Exactly. Not that loud, but incredibly powerful. And that's that shin on the meat of the thigh. And turning that hip over. Just over 90 seconds remains in round one. Fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. He landed a short inside leg kick there as well. Good, Lytle seems unfazed by the nasty cut over his left eye. And again with the right leg kick, but catches it. Chris Lytle can't. Oh, look at that. Tiago gets him back up, but Lytle keeps attacking. Joe, you bring up a great point, though. You hear the slap of the kick of Lytle, and you feel the thud of the kick of Alves. Very nice defensive move right there by Lytle, countering. Really using good boxing techniques here. <laughs> Throws a leg kick of his own, checked by Tiago. Lido very aggressive, as we mentioned, here in round one. She came with the big right hand. Lido really showing us a different Chris Lido tonight. 175-pound Indiana State boxing champion. They always talk about that fight years ago in hook and shoot when he knocked out Aaron Rival. One of the greatest fights ever, and a 9-1-1 one one boxing record for Chris Lytle, so his hands well documented, and he's a veteran here inside the octagon. This is 11th appearance in the UFC, and that doesn't include the couple of fights during the Ultimate Fighter for the comeback. Interesting to see if Chris Lytle can drag Tiago into a three-round war, what Tiago's endurance is going to be like, considering the significant amount of weight that he's dehydrated and taken off his body to make the 170-pound limit. They need to get right on that cut right away. Check it out. Doctor's going to check it. Strickland's got it. Sit down, buddy. Strickland's got it. He's got it. Oh, yeah, I told him. Yep, perfect. Thank you. Oh, that's he nasty, though, Joe. Show. It's nasty, Mike, but it's, it's over the eye in a position that it's a lot of it is dripping down the side of his face and not into the eye. Oh, the eyelid is the real dangerous area. He's got this. And I mentioned that in the first round, Joe. It seems almost as the blood's rolling down the side of his yeah. eye as opposed to, you know, the, the over the side, if you will, not going into his eye as opposed to right into it affecting his vision. Right. They're, they're dripping some sort of an ant, some sort of a coagulant in it right now. Let's hope the doctor can stop that cut. Here's the right hand that did the damage right there. The first punch Tiago landed. Take the cut out of it. Would you give that first round to Lytle? Yes. Yeah, I think uh, Chris was a little bit more aggressive, but it was a good round. You ready? Good close round. You ready? And Let's good go leg fight. kicks landed by Tiago like we see in almost all of the fights. Second round. Mike Goldberg, Joe Rogan, Prudential Center, Newark, New Jersey. They exchange leg kicks, and Tiago's is harder. Tiago's leg kicks are outstanding. Lyle again comes in with a flurry. Tiago originally from shoot box, comes from that great Muay Thai background. Alves trains with 18 black belts. That American top team. You want to talk about a lion's den. That American top team is just a, an incredible camp right now. This has been a striking battle, much to the delight of the fans thus far here tonight. Cuts all oh, that's what I'm talking about with a leg kick. Thud. You see the way he turns his hip and gets his body weight in that? I mean, that is just picture-perfect Muay Thai technique. 
Tiago Alves, in my opinion, has the, the best leg kicks in MMA right now. It's a heck of a compliment considering who we have in this sport today. Got to fake the inside leg kick that Lytle had tried to cover the powerful right hand. The only one close to him right now, that arguably, is Anderson Silva, the middleweight champion, who definitely has a more diversified striking uh, repertoire, but Tiago's leg kicks are just outstanding. And as you mentioned, it's all again, that, again. It's all in that hip turn and that snap. And it's so fast, you feel it. And it takes your base away. Every time he does that, it takes a little bit away from your ability to sprawl, a little bit away from your ability to turn your legs into your punches. Matt Lytle is happy to exchange with Tiago Alves. Yeah, Lytle has definitely made a commitment to a more exciting style. You know, and that's so important. The UFC, man, what they want to see is exciting fights. They want to see guys taking chances. To take a chance and lose and have an exciting fight, you're much more likely to come back than to cautiously win a close decision that's boring. Lytle pushing forward again. I mean, it, again with the leg kicks of Tiago. And Tiago ducks, he moves to the side, and he delivers that leg kick. takes a look up at the clock, midway point of round number two. Here in the sold out Prudential Center. Now, Brand new building in Newark. I give the advantage to Chris Lytle in the ground game, and I'm kind of shocked that he's he hasn't been pushing that. Let's talk about that the one time they were on the ground. Sorry, Joe. And Alves just said, let's go right back up. Yeah, yeah. Alves does not want to stand up. Oh, he does not want to go to the ground with, with Chris Lyle. And you see the way Tiago Alves steps in. He actually steps out with that lead foot and then spins the hip where you kick through your opponent. Yeah, it's picture-perfect technique, Mike. It'll be interesting to see how many of these uh, continuous yeah, leg kicks? There you go, right that there. That was breaking down. Yeah. He's limping right That's now on his exactly left leg. exactly what I was just going to say, Joe. Yeah, he's how many more badly. he can take? And he's... see that he fakes it with a Superman punch. And don't think Tiago doesn't sense that. He sees that. He's waiting for an opening to tag it again. And anytime they, they move away from each other and create space, that gives Tiago a chance to set up and look for that shot again. Meanwhile, Chris Lytle's landing some big punches. The battle of the hands is being won by Lytle. Yes. But those kicks have been thunderous, especially here in round two. It's just such an example of the, the perfect technique. I was gonna say, if you're a young Muay Thai fighter, stop, go back, and watch it. Break it down, because that is perfect technique. Final minute of round number two. Lytle's base Tiago. leg is bruised. Tiago is setting up that leg kick again right now. You can see, see you it. can even yeah. see Joe, even with that left kick that really didn't have much on it a moment ago from Lytle, as much on it as it had earlier. That's because that leg is badly bruised right now and beaten down. Yeah, if he can pull his shorts up right now, we're going to see welts all above his left thigh. Again, and he can. lands it. Lytle is really limping now. He's bouncing around to try to cover it, but he is placing a significant amount of weight on his rear leg because his right, his left leg is jacked. Now the left eye of Alves is a bit swollen. You can see it as he comes forward. And a little slip by Tiago Alves. Yeah, Tiago's left eye is swelling up a bit. And Chris is targeting it now. Oh, right, yeah, right the leg kid kid at the bell. Man. Chris is walking, he's Chris, really, really limping on that leg. How do you feel, you all right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you want to be an ultimate fighter. Takes all those kicks, he's asked how he feels, he goes, yeah, goes yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, it's messed up, Joe. Let's take a look at some of these leg kicks by Tiago Alves. Over and over and over again. Now they see the perfect technique, that shin just digging into the meat. Over and over again, he lands these. And this is causing Chris Lytle's left leg to break man, down. Give him a little bit, man. Just give him a little bit. Come on, oh, give him a little bit. Come on, he needs it. Come on. Oh, man. what? Oh, the my doctor goodness. stopping it? Come on. Really? The fight has been stopped. That's ridiculous. We've seen far worse cuts. I completely disagree with that. 
I don't even know that Tiago Silva, or pardon me, Tiago Alves really knows yet. He's still being attended to in his corner. I completely I don't even know that disagree he with this doctor stoppage. That is outrageous. You know, you got to give the guy a chance. It's not, it's not affecting his performance. It's not affecting his vision to the point where he's unable to defend himself. I just think that's a terrible call. The cut was bad after round one. That's when it was bleeding. He didn't even get hit there in round two. So as you said, why let him fight throughout the second round if you're going to stop it now? Yeah, well, he's It's he the developed, same cut it was before. Mike, he has developed a little bit of a new cut on his eyelid, but I completely agree with you. Let, let's take a look at this again. This is the, the cut that started all off. This is the first punch that Tiago threw. It landed right on the eyebrow, starts bleeding right away, and it only got worse as the fight went on. Let's take one more look at it again. The first punch of the fight turned out to be the most significant one. And, you know, here's a doctor looking at it. And, you know, we've seen way, way worse cuts in the UFC that have gone on. It's not bleeding there. He's, he's stopping the fight. It's not even affecting his vision. Lytle could make the argument that he was winning this fight. But the one thing that should be said is that Dana White will be impressed with the way that Lytle brought it tonight. And there you see the second cut that Joe was alluding to. And here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the second round, based on the doctor's advice, referee Dan Mergliota has called a stop to this contest. Declaring the winner by TKO, Tiago Pitbull Alves. And trust me when I tell you, Tiago Alves doesn't want to be the victor this way either. What a classy young man. You know what? Let him dance again. Why not? I'm here with the winner. Very exciting, Tiago Alves. Tiago, very unfortunate cut to stop that fight. It was a very entertaining fight before it. But, uh, you know, it just didn't seem that the cut was that bad. Did you agree with the stoppage? Or do you think the doctor should have let it go on? I think you guys should let it go on. You know, it was beautiful. I was having fun. He was having fun. But... You know, the, the doctors say you gotta stop, so you gotta follow the orders, you know, you're just here to do a job. But, you know, Chris Lado, he's a great guy, man. I, I was enjoying the fight so much, so we hope we can do it again. Well, I'll tell you what, Cage Size, we were really enjoying a very entertaining fight. Very unfortunate it was cut so short. Yeah, Chris Lado, he's come out very aggressive. You know, I knew he was gonna come out like that. I was ready, you know, save him up for the last round. And he got good hands, bro. And I mean, that's the good thing about box, you know, he always exposes his leg and everything. But it was a good fight, man. And I should let it go on, you know. But, you know, whatever. It turned out to be the, the first punch he threw right here. This is the most significant punch of the fight. This is the very first punch. This is the one you caught him and cut him with. Yeah, that was a overhand, right overhand, you know. And he dropped his head. I dropped my head to the other side. And I caught him. I got lucky. Well, Tiago, it was a great fight between two very exciting fighters. and. I, I would really like to see you guys fight again and have a rematch. We're here with Chris Lytle. Chris, very entertaining fight. Now, I, I know you wanted to continue. The crowd wanted the fight to continue. How upset are you at the stoppage? Well, man, you know, uh, I feel like the same thing was going on at the end of the second as in the first. I can still see it's not bleeding in my eye. Let it go, you know? I mean, it was a fight I wanted, you know? I wanted to fight Diego. I know how good he is at stand-up. I knew we were just going to sit there and bang for three rounds, you know? So that's exactly what I've been wanting. I want good, exciting fights. This was it. I'm just pissed, you know, that it's over. Well, it wasn't your fault, Chris. It was a very exciting fight, fantastic fight. And uh, I wanted to see it go to the end. You wanted to see it. I'm sure the fans would love to see it again. Tiago 